Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? What's up, everybody? So, we are back for the season finale of one of the hit shows on Fox, Gotham. We reviewed every single episode up until now. We were prepping earlier. And uh, honestly, y'all, like, it met the expectations that I set for it. I really enjoyed this episode. This might have been one of my favorites, all honesty. Um, this is going to be our full spoiler review section of it. So anything goes, any topic it goes. And if you want us to continue the conversation, leave comments below. We about to go in. So, Joe, what were your impressions, first of all, of this season finale? Did it meet your expectations on any level? It did, as far as like it, as far as like my enthusiasm and um, my expectation that it's going to be a really great episode. Um, it met that, but as far as like what I expected, as far as like the plot, it totally caught me off guard. Um, That's a good thing. Yeah, definitely, definitely, it was a good thing. Um, yeah, it was definitely a good thing, but it it, it was I couldn't predict pretty much. Anything that was going to take place in this episode, that's what I'm saying. For me, all honesty, y'all, like, the reason why I love this so much is there was never a point where I felt like something was predictable. At all. Like, when it, even if it was like Barbara with um, Lee, I was thinking, okay, maybe Barbara is like trying to scare Lee out of a relationship with Bruce. Oh, not Bruce, but uh, with Gordon. And uh, but then when she started talking about some of the things that she had done with this man and some of the things that she was asking questions about her relationship with like um, Commissioner Gordon, she had said like at one point she's like, "Does he hit you?" She's like, "Lee was like, what? Excuse me? Like out of out of passion?" I was like, "Okay, she got some screws loose." I was like, "I mean, first of all, her parents are dead." But then when they revealed that she was the one that killed her parents, I thought about that idea, but I never thought it would get pushed the head like that, I was like thinking, like, dude, <laughs> Lee needs to run. And there's so many unpredictable moments in this episode that's like that. And that's what this show to me is always embodied. Like it was a show that came out of nowhere to start with, coming from a premise of an origin story you don't know the fullness of. But at the same time, like in just even in this episode, like there was so many unpredictable moments and I loved every second of it. There was an epic, um, and I know you were gonna talk about it. Uh, gun scene in the beginning of the episode that totally threw me off because what had happened was Falcon was held up in one of I don't know if it was Bell Reeve Hospital or one of the hospitals and um, he was kind of strapped down and um, I knew that Commissioner Gordon, or Gordon was going to try to get there to try to protect him but who got there first was Penguin and Butch had a machine gun and they were I mean they were literally there like Penguin had his knife right there at his neck and Gordon pops in at the worst opportune moment. And I was like, somebody's about to die. I don't know how they're going to make it out. But then to make matters worse is that Maroney's men got there and like, Gordon's like, let's get Buck. <laughs> he ended up like going in and the, the, the choreography for the gun sequences and the action sequences in this episode were amazing. Only thing that I wish would have came up I wish that Victor Zaz would have came up to try to be. Oh, that's a good point. I wish he would have came that's in to like really do something about what's going on with Falcon. I was like, where's Zaz? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I was waiting for him to literally show his colors. But I mean, that doesn't take anything away from the episode. Don't get me wrong. It was just a lot going on, and we're gonna try to go and dissect as much as possible. But that that sequence alone, I was like, I had this huge smile on my face. I was like. I didn't see this coming, but this is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, what about you, Joe? What are some things you want to talk about this episode? So, I guess like I was segue off the of that part. So, um, going to the episode, I initially thought like because they showed the clip of the penguin and the machine gun, like, um, and I was like the belt fed machine gun. I was like, oh snap, this is this is about to go down. But um, it did happen. Mm -hmm. It did, but not in the way I expected it. Um, but anyway, so so I'm going to this episode thinking Penguin had like some master plan or something like that. But it actually takes place, you know what I'm saying? He really doesn't. Well, he kind of does when he tried to make a move on um, 
Falcone and like while he was uh, strapped in that hospital bed or whatever. But that went south and he revealed his plan to Falcone. So at this point, Everything and then Gordon out. broke that up. So at this point, he was like, his plan just went south. Like, mm -hmm. and the thing about this episode, like the war aspect between these different factions, um, it's, it's, it really is like a mess. Yeah. Um, because you see like people's different schemes and plots going into this, to the episode and it's like, they're all going south mm -hmm. and it's just like a blood feud and a, like a battle royale. That's funny going south. Just, Falcon's it's, it's about to go south. Get you. <laughs> um, and then you see, so, so what's real, what really, I found interesting this episode too is Selena Kyle. Oh, I wouldn't talk about that. <laughs> Fish drafted Selena Kyle, you know what I'm saying? It's one of her henchmen. No, 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 no. Before you go into this, Fish showed up, y'all, on a boat. I was like, what in the world? She came out of nowhere. I was like, first of all, how are you all still alive off the helicopter? They didn't explain that. Well, they didn't explain how she lived through all that, but she did. And she came off the boat. <laughs> I forget the words. I think I wrote them down. Selena was like, she was like, hey, good morning, wow. child. No, no, even before that, she was like, wow. And then, like, um, Fish was like, good morning, child. And, like, Selena was like, we ain't children. And it ain't morning. And, like, she was like, it will be. I was like, okay, no way is she going to, like, recruit Selena Kyle. But then <laughs> when, um, oh, what happened? So they made it out. They made it out of the hospital alive in an ambulance, my, my dad, which was crazy. So they got to this warehouse thinking they would be safe. Cause Falcone was like, the only people to know about this are dead. <laughs> he turned around, Fish had a whole swoon of people. And they were just like, and then what made my crazy is that before Fish even showed herself, the first person showed up was Selena Kyle with a shotgun. I was like, what? Oh, go ahead and continue though. I, I just had to bring that up. And um, at this point, you know, Harvey is, is um, Falcone, Harvey, <clears throat> And um, Gordon and Penguin all in this warehouse, um, thinking that they're safe. And so they roll up, and, and um, so so you see, you know, Selena Kyle and Fish all and their squad roll up in there, and it's like, yo, y'all, we got y'all. Jada was looking fine with that haircut. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and so and so Jada chains them up. You know, and <laughs> so and Gordon's trying to talk to us. Selena was like, "Yo, help us up," you know. And Selena was like, "Just cause I kind of sort of know you, ain't nobody got time for that." Help you. <laughs> and um, so Fish's plot is like, okay, so she's gonna call um, Moroni, right? And thinking that they're gonna be partners, they're gonna work some type of deal out. This is getting territories back. Stupid um, douche. <laughs> which I, I kind of feel like she should have known. Um, I mean, but no, no, that. no, no. This dude with his stupid self gonna go there. She gave Falcone to him on a silver platter and Penguin and Gordon just to deal with everything. And she was like, I mean, she came kind of correct. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would think out of respect, he wouldn't have the audacity to talk to her in such a demeaning way and at the same time keep doing it i was like this ain't no game this girl is crazy you don't know what this chick has gone through you know like he had no idea and then i mean i seen him play those games with penguin penguin to a fault like he, he will snap and i mean i saw him playing those games with penguin but i was like this ain't gonna flower her and then <laughs> what was he saying he was like toots or like baby cakes or babes after that I even wrote in the quote, in the quotes. I was like, "Maroni is done." Sure enough, pow! I was like, "I was like, wow." But I'm, but I'm saying like, like both of them are gunning for a top spot. So I was like, I know like they're gonna beef. But I mean that's fun. To. But not at that time. You why would you open your mouth and say, "Oh yeah, you number you you're number two." Say it for me and make sure you know you're number two. What kind of foolish is that? I wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. Yeah, I hit the fan. Yeah, he did. And now. Man, Penguin was Penguin was good for this. He oh my gosh, he said that. He did. He asked an Instagram situation. He was like, he was like, he was like, fish. Like, I know I'm dead. I know my life. 
You know what I'm saying? It's done. <laughs> but please take care of um, Falcone. Take care of Moroni. Cause he was, he was, he was like, uh -uh. he said, take care of Falcone because Moroni will kill you. After the point that you, you take care of this and y'all be partners, he's gonna take you out. That's what he said, basically. And um, it, it, but and that's pretty much sparked that whole um that whole beef between Fish and um Moroni. So yeah, <laughs> and. <laughs> She shoots him, and then a gunfight breaks out between the two separate squads between Moroni and Fish's crew. Mm -hmm. And then, next thing you know, that's when, and you see Penguin in the background, like, <laughs> unfastening his rope. Everybody was trying to jump ship. <laughs> and then, like, so, so good. Oh, no, actually, Bullet was good, because everybody went through the line, and, like, she got the bullet. She's like, oh, you good. It's all, <laughs> you can chill. You ain't going to die today. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> so they escape for a second, and then you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Go kill the rest, man. That's running so crazy. Okay, I mean, there's three different things going on now because in the beginning, like Bruce is trying to figure out. He he's obsessed with the fact that his dad is not the man that he thought he was, and he 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 hates the idea of having that being tainted. And so he's going scouring the whole library trying to figure out what is in there. Alfred's trying to convince him otherwise. And at the same time, you got the stuff that's going on with Barbara. Barbara um, takes it upon herself to go and weave in with Lee. And I was like, man, I've had this happen to me before in a relationship. This, this, she just wove in to try to put herself in. I was thinking that she was trying to like push down on like their relationship. But she went and tried to kill Lee. I was like, you can't kill the most beautiful, cutest girl in the world. Why are you gonna do that? Why are you gonna do that? I was like, she lost her gosh darn mind. And so, when that broke out, that's when they transitioned to the scene where, like, everybody was trying to get away. And I was thinking, okay, what is about to go down next? In some kind of way, I don't know where this ninja got it from, but he came out with, like, a freaking machine gun and just, like, spraying it everywhere. And folks just dying. And then after he got done completely with that whole clip, he goes and kills like three other people with just a straight up headshots. And I was like, okay, now he's going fish. Now this is the most predictable part of the episode only because it was leaked that <clears throat> Jada would maybe not be in the second season. I was pissed off about this um, because I told you, I was like, they better not kill her. They better not kill her. And it's not been confirmed, but the fact is when they got up to the roof, like fish was ready. And they, they went in, like, they went in blow for blow, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they still had not revealed what Victor Zaz had did to Butch. And I was like, eventually that's going to have to come up, you know? And I guess they had micro-programmed him to do whatever Penguin had said. I thought that he would be able to break that, you know? But it got to the line where they were about to try to kill each other. And, like, Butch had pulled a gun, what I thought was going to be on Penguin. But he couldn't choose who to shoot. So he shot both of them. And then... Like some old Star Wars joint. <laughs> like, Penguin like basically ambushes her and pushes her off, but he pushes her off into the water instead of putting the blood in her head. So, I feel like that was the only cop out of this episode. Uh, it was a decent fight. I knew it was gonna come to a head, um, but I was like, looking at Penguin just sitting up into the sky, and the sky is like literally lightning, like this is, this is mine, you know what I'm saying? You know somebody's gonna come to the forefront and challenge him. That's just that's just how Gotham is. So I look forward to seeing how that's gonna go, pacing moving into the second season. Um, but then like, it's crazy because I really like the relationship between Falcone and Gordon. Like it got established in the first episode, but it got kind of solidified when they were talking about like the knife that Falcone had kept on him at all times. He had basically said that, like, your dad is one of the most honest men I've ever known, but he kept a blade on him. And I think that, honestly, Gordon needed to hear that because he was being tainted by the stuff that he had to do to try to keep the city safe. Because he was thinking that in order for me to maintain myself, I have to be this way and at the same time be opposite of the things I'm doing. And he was doing, he was crossing the line. And so basically, if I come to him, like, look, you need to be hip to this fact that you are probably an awesome man just like your dad. 
but even your dad kept a blade on him, that means that he's ready for whatever was in, in the next corner. And so I think that Gordon really needed to hear that, and I thought that was a really awesome line. I don't know if Falcone was really going to go to the South. I really don't think so. Um, and then at the end of the episode, I'll let you reveal the last part because I was geeking out about it. I know how you go ahead, bro. So in the last part, I feel like they shouldn't have put this in the trailer. I hate trailers now because they found, um, what was the quote? Um, Lucius Fox has said, and I said this in the last the last uh, review, that um, that Bruce's dad was uh, a stoic, and he thought of a book, um, None So Blind, and um, he was like, I got to find this book, and like Alfred's like, what what is the matter, you know? And they found the book, and inside it was like a, it looked like a transceiver. I, and Alfred was like, man, this is a bomb, you know? But I don't. The only thing that is crazy about it is when he clicked it. The fireplace pushed forward and then moved back. And then it showed a corridor like you're going down into the cave. And so I was like, this is definitely the back cave. And even when you hear it, if you go back to the trailer, or whatever, whatever time you look at this, if you go back and hear it, you can literally hear bats like flying in the background. You never see bats, but you can literally hear it as the camera pans down to the bottom. And you can see nothing but really darkness. The thing to me is I feel like Alfred knew about it. The only reason why is because like he was almost like I don't know if this is here I feel like he didn't want Bruce to find it and I can't believe that Alfred knowing everything in his house would never see that like, I just I just I felt I failed to believe that so I mean that adds a lot of anticipation to come I wish they would have actually went down into it I thought that would be cooler like having like a shadow in the background as Bruce was going down there by himself I thought that would be really awesome that didn't happen um, but all in all, I really love this episode. I give the episode at least a 9.5 out of 10. I think that only thing that I didn't like is a little too campish when it came to the anticlimactic end of Fish Mooney, if that is the end to her. Um, but everything else is crazy. Oh, and how could I forget the Riddler? Freaking <laughs> Edward lost it, y'all. He had a psychotic break to the point that he was, um, what is the medical um, prognosis on it? Dissociative disorder mixed with bipolarism and a hint of, um, what is it? Schizophrenia. 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 And he was going back and forth and battling the conceptualization of what people were perceiving him as versus what he thinks he needs to be versus justifying who he needs to be. And I was like, listen to these dialogues. And I was like, he is totally losing his mind at the point that his glasses were gone. And I was like, after his glasses were gone, I was like, yeah. He's lost it. <laughs> but that was some interesting imagery. It was some interesting, and it was a short imagery. Only thing I don't like, and this is another detraction, I'm not gonna bring it to a 9.4 or anything, but who the heck is Miss Kringle? I mean, this whole time I'm sitting there waiting, I'm like, okay, maybe she's related to Harley Quinn or something crazy like that. But I still don't know who Miss Kringle is. I was like, she can't just be there as an object to set this man off. She has to have some kind of significance because she's off. So I, I, that's the only thing I didn't like. I didn't like that either. Um, but what's your final takeaway before we roll this out? This episode was amazing. Um, kind of, yeah. I kind of didn't like how um, <clears throat> fish got pushed off the roof. Man, that's my old booty. Uh, and I, 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 I would have expected her to go out with like more of a bang. Yeah. But, um, Gordon was a straight OG. He was. He, I, I really liked him in this episode. Um, he was, you know, pulling out the the moves that they don't teach you in the academy. Um, so I mean, this guy was. I was like, this guy's a straight gangster, man. Like, but I mean, I'm definitely probably gonna watch this episode again. Yeah. <laughs> to I say am. The least. I am too. But uh, yeah, that's my take. I give it a maybe. I give it a nine. I give it a ten. I give it a ten. I give it a ten. Dang. But I still don't like the fact how they ended fish. Yeah. I don't like that. Other thing, this is the last point I have. How do you, I want you to leave this in the conversation. How do you think that Gordon is going to treat Barbara after or if Lee tells Gordon that Barbara was the one that killed her own parents by stabbing them multiple times? 
Cause that was the big revelation, and leave the yeah, only one that's got that huge knowledge. Huge revelation. So I was just like, so do you think that like Lee's gonna tell Gordon, and is Gordon gonna arrest her or get her mental help? What is he gonna do with that knowledge? And how can you be with somebody after knowing something like that? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm interested what y'all comments on about that. That's my final thoughts. But uh, I really love this episode. Give it a 9.5 out of 10. One of the best episodes this year. I would give it a 10, but the only reason why is because of the fish drink. But um, also, I want to know where did Selena go after um, Penguin pulled out that machine gun? Because she was built. But she you know, Selena is a real OG though, and I don't know about her motivations of following fish she either. Ghost. I think that if if Bruce would have, I mean, not Danny, if um, Gordon would have brought up Bruce. And what would Bruce think or something like that? I think that she maybe would have had a little bit of hesitancy, but she, that's her character. That's how she, that's what she's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, that was weird. She, uh, you never did find out what happened to her. I was just, just curious. I thought that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We've literally dissected this whole entire episode. Hopefully y'all enjoyed our spoiler free review of tonight's episode of Gotham. Um, the season finale was epic. And uh, please definitely leave a like below if you really like this uh, spoiler review. We're gonna go and have a non-spoiler review as well. So if you wanna go back and check that, if any of your friends that haven't seen it yet, shoot check them to that. that. Check this, check, yeah, check all of it. Check all of it. Check, 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 check. One, two, we out. Yo, S-E-L, zero, three, wow. zero. We gone, we gone, we gone. I'm still here. I'm we still gone. Here. He ain't there, he's gone. Here.